Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Everyone is in their office edition of the not quite Monday check in. <laughs> during I was the, wondering if you were going to be honest about that. <laughs> <laughs> during the week leading up to Palm Sunday, uh, I'm Damon Jensen Heitman. I'm one of the pastors, First Presbyterian Church of Hastings, Nebraska, joined by Greg Allen Pickett, the other pastor at First Presbyterian Church in Hastings, Nebraska. Happy to be back here with you. Through the magic of technology, our Monday check-in last week was pre-recorded earlier, and so Damon and I haven't done one of these now in uh, almost two weeks. Yeah, we're out of shape. Yes. It'll, it'll show, probably. It probably will. We'll get our conditioning back, as they say, get fit in training. So The good, the good news is it's a familiar scripture. Uh, the more challenging news is I'm not choosing to focus as much on the scripture. Yeah, you're not week. using it, so who cares? Uh, but uh, yeah, as Damon said, it's Palm Sunday, uh, and uh, which is of course the Sunday right before Easter, uh, and we're gonna focus on that. But let's uh, let's open with a word of prayer. I will uh, lead us in that, and then uh, we'll jump in. Oh, you know. Let's pray. Gracious God. We come before you today on a rainy, dreary day in central Nebraska, and we feel the dreariness in our souls because of what's going on around our country. Particularly, Lord, we're concerned and pray for the violence that occurred in Boulder, Colorado yesterday, as well as the violence that occurred in Atlanta last week. We recognize that this is not what you had intended for your world. We recognize that this is not who you have called us to be. And so, Lord, as we approach reading your scripture and reflecting on your holy word today, may your scripture speak to us in ways that teach us how to be reconcilers, how to be builders of bridges, how to reach those who are not reached so that they know that they are precious and beloved children of God, that they know that they have a family of faith, a community around them that loves them so that hopefully these things will stop happening. In the meantime, as they are happening, Lord, we ask your presence of comfort and peace with the family members, friends, and loved ones of those who were killed and who are injured as well as for all who are experiencing the trauma of the event in their community. We also pray particularly for the Asian American community that is experiencing higher levels of violence at this time, Lord. We ask that you bring them comfort and peace while you also call us to be peacemakers. Bless and guide our conversation today. Bless and guide our study of your holy word. And Lord, May your holy word impress upon our minds and hearts the call to be your hands and feet in the world, to be peacemakers and reconcilers and builders of bridges. It's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as you mentioned, Greg, we do, this is coming Sunday is Palm Sunday, and um, we have a little bit of a Palm Sunday thing going on, and well, I mean, this, I mean, it's not entirely fair, right? Because this all takes place in like one or two chapters of the Gospel of John. Like this stuff is all connected. It's all meant to be understood as one story. And we do it a disservice, really, on Sunday mornings by picking out seven to ten or however many verses of it and not sort of trying to hold it all at once. Um, so we, we start with some of the Palm Sunday narrative and then, and then we move on to some of the narratives that we, uh, would share and use and reflect on during Holy Week, particularly on Monday, Thursday. So, uh, this, me, this, yeah, go ahead. Just a, a little interesting quirk of the revised common lectionary. Uh, we talk about this. This is the prescribed texts that we as Presbyterians don't have to use, but are uh, invited to use. And uh, what they've done is offered for us um, 
two options on the Sunday before Easter. One of them is to celebrate Palm Sunday, which is the historic tradition of this church, First Presbyterian Church of Hastings, and the historic tradition of the Presbyterian Church in the United States. Almost every church I've been a part of growing up uh, celebrates the Sunday before Easter as Palm Sunday. Uh, I don't know, Damon, same with you as a UCC kid? Yep, yep. I always okay. waved the branches. Indeed, yep. And uh, But the Revised Common Lectionary also offers us this as Passion Sunday, where we actually engage with the, the narrative of the Passion of the Christ, the last week of Christ's life um, leading up to his, his crucifixion. Uh, and so we do a Monday Thursday service and a Good Friday service, which incorporates some of that passion narrative. But some churches uh, will choose to celebrate this as Passion Sunday. And we're sort of doing a combination of both this year. We're going to do our palms. We're going to wave our palms. We're going to read the Palm Sunday story. But then we're going to work our way into the passion narrative, which we will then reflect on a bit more on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday of next week. And you'll hear more about that from us next week. Monday on the passion side. But uh, for now, that's uh, just a brief introduction mm -hmm. for all of you liturgical nerds out there who listen so raptly to our weekly yeah. podcast. Yeah. That's true. I don't know. Get your, don't get your hackles. Are they called hackles? I think they are hackles. Yeah. Don't get your hackles all raised. So we'll ask you to keep the hackles down today. Yeah, lower your hackles. <laughs> <laughs> so this starts in, uh, in John 12. Uh, this is verses 12 through 16. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival, the festival here being Passover, heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. And we skip forward a little bit to John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. And this, if this is part of the supper scene, correct, Greg? Correct. This is after they have eaten the last supper and after Jesus has washed their feet. Their feet. <laughs> their footsies. There's all their little tootsies. Indeed. Um, okay, so we pick up at 31. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also, also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And there ends that reading as well. So Greg, what do you got? What's going on? Well, uh, first, just for those who are wondering, uh, in John 12, 14, Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it as it was written. Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt, is a reference to uh, Zechariah, uh, an Old Testament prophet who said that the Messiah would arrive in this particular way. And so every time we read this Palm Sunday narrative, we are invited to reflect back on the prophecy in Zechariah that talks about the coming Messiah. Um, and so this is a chance to connect the Older Testament with the New Testament, and uh, that's what we do here. So um, a helpful thing there. Uh, <laughs> but this, uh, in John 13, there's also reflections of the Old Testament, uh, particularly in the last few verses. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And uh, we see a similar phrase, a call to love your neighbor as yourself, also in the Old Testament. And uh, Jesus is 
has previously said all the law and commandments of the Old Testament can be summed up in this call to love God and love one another. And Jesus is once again reminding his disciples of that call, that this is the commandment. And when we get to Maundy Thursday, uh, the word Maundy is from the, the Latin word for commandment. And so it specifically references this passage. And so uh, I love this passage, uh, just as I love the double love command. Uh, and I said love a lot there, didn't I, Damon? It came up, it's come up a couple of times, yes. Um, but what we've got here in this passage uh, is this call to love one another. This is how we live out the faith that Jesus is leaving us with as he prepares to leave us. He's, he's saying, this is how it is. And so we have a special, uh, special thing this, uh, this week, uh, which uh, is a hymn that uh, our director of the Chancel Choir, Dr. Robin Kuzer, it's his favorite hymn, Come Labor On. It's, I believe it's considered the hymn of Hastings College. Is that, am I correct about that? No, lead on, O King Eternal. You're right. Lead um, on, it's not Come Labor On. It's, this is just Robin's and, favorite hymn. And Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Those are yes. the two that they would traditionally okay. sing. Come Labor On just happens to be Dr. Robin Kuzer's favorite. And uh, I was talking with Dr. Kuzer way back in February and talking about the season of Lent and both the series that I've been preaching on, which is this notion of self-sacrifice, as well as uh, our Lenten devotional guide that uh, Damon and Tylee wrote for us, which is this, this theme of Christian unity. And Robin got really inspired by both the uh, sermon series theme as well as the guide. And he wrote new verses to come labor on, which to me are an embodiment, uh, an infleshing, right? Uh, a making flesh, putting flesh on the bones of Jesus' command that we love one another just as Jesus has loved us. So what I'm going to do for you is read the lyrics that Dr. Kuzer wrote. We will hear a version of this song uh, shared at our worship service on Sunday uh, by a virtual choir, which is really cool. Uh, Tom Mahalik helped us edit together a video of 43 voices singing this song together. But let me read the lyrics because they really have some beautiful and deep meaning and, and tie beautifully into this, uh, this passage uh, of Jesus giving this commandment. So it reads like this. <clears throat> Come Actually, labor on. Pause for a second. I'm yes. Because I think if I... Uh, do you want to share your screen? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Then I there think we people will we'll be able to, to see you. Perfect. To see it. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully that will transfer in the recording too, right? It should. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it reads like this. Come labor on. Who dares stand idle in this world of pain? When others suffer, what have we to gain? Now is the time to heed the master's call, caring for all. Come labor on. Following Jesus in our daily life, transform the world by living sacrifice, living like Jesus in our love and work with acts, not just words. Come labor on, engage the world in Christian unity, serving the Lord to build community, sharing the word, our faith, and God's bright light in love to unite. Come labor on, trusting in Christ to lead us on our way, building a world much different than today, filling God's world with love for everyone, revealing his son. Come labor on, knowing God holds us in his loving hands as we engage, serve, and trust in his commands, caring and sharing God's endless love and joy to build, not destroy. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I find, uh, I was going to say fun, but not, I don't know if fun's really the right word, but <clears throat> about Robin's reworked lyrics, I should go back and look at the original lyrics um, to see just how they, how they differ, but it really, it picks up strongly on, on this idea of following and what does it mean to follow Jesus? And that comes up a lot, particularly in this portion of the Gospel of John. Um, the, the part of the Gospel of John that we read for this past Sunday 
um, comes in between these two passages <laughs> that we read. And, uh, and, and part of it is Jesus saying, those who uh, serve me must follow me. And wherever I go, there they will be also. Um, and, and this is part of the gospel. Jesus is anticipating his, his death. Uh, and he starts giving a, he starts really talking about, talks about following and he talks about loving. Um, and that, that when he's gone, what will it mean for the disciples? It's been pretty obvious how to follow him so far, right? He, he goes to Capernaum, they go to Capernaum. He goes to wherever else, they go to wherever else, right? Um, and what will it mean for the disciples to continue to follow after, after his death and after his resurrection? Um, and this, and what Robin has written here, really, really strongly picks up on that. What does it mean for people of faith today to to follow, uh, to continue the, the work of Jesus. Yeah, it's uh, the term I would use is incarnational, right? It is, is uh, which literally carne is, is meat or flesh. It's putting flesh on the bone. So we, Jesus gives us this structure uh, of, of a commandment to love one another as I've loved you. And so that's the structure. And how do we put flesh on that skeleton? Uh, how do we put flesh on the bones there? And uh, the lyrics that Robin has written so beautifully reflect, this is what it looks like lived out in the world. So here it is in theory in a book, here it is the, the, the words of Jesus coming from his lips written down in the Bible, but how does this look lived out in the world, incarnate? Um, and and so, yeah, it, it's just a beautiful reflection of of God's love incarnate, both in the form and person of Jesus Christ, but also in the in, in the form of us as disciples of Jesus Christ. How do we follow? What does following look like? Now that Jesus is no longer with us, how do we continue to follow his way, the way, uh, and share the good news in word and deed? And uh, I think it captures it pretty darn well. Um, yeah, and one of the things that I, I'm, I'm taking a look just in the first verse, um, that it's that the following, um, like it's not it's not just following for the sake of following, um, that that it, the the following and the living out of these ideals and principles, uh, we hope and we trust has has a has a shape, has a form, has an impact beyond ourselves, right? So, uh, so Robin has written here. Uh, come labor on, following Jesus in our daily life, transform the world by living sacrifice. The, the, this idea that the acting in loving ways, acting in kind ways, acting in, in just ways, um, is not just a thing that we do because it's nice to do, uh, which, it, which it is, or because it makes us feel good, uh, which it does, but also because it is, it is the, a, the, the tool that we wield to, to change the world around us and to, and to form it into uh, a more loving place, a, a place that more fully reflects the likeness and image of God. Yeah. Yeah. And we, uh, the notion of, of transformation, both of ourselves and of our world is, uh, it's an important part of our discipleship journey that we are called to be those folks that enact transformation, both of our own lives, but transform the world by our own transformation, by our own living sacrifice. And um, yeah, and in the next verse, he picks up on, on the theme of Christian unity, the call to build community and sharing the word, our faith. And again, this is how we enact this. This is how we make this real in our daily lives. Um, this, this call to labor, um, this call to share the good news of the gospel in word and in deed. And uh, Robin does a nice job sort of balancing those two things uh, in these lyrics. We got to be careful. Uh, we don't want to say too many nice things about Robin because we don't want him to get a big head, right? I'm but sure he's not listening. He, uh, <laughs> 
but he really did a nice job capturing um, the theme of Lent and, and the theme of our Lenten devotional guide in these lyrics. Um, yeah. One other thing that also sort of strikes me uh, about this and, and about this season of Lent in general is, you, you know, to, to follow in this way to, um, he's got a line here, building a world much different than today, um, to, to engage in these acts, the kind of acts of, of sort of loving service to others that we're talking about. We, we also, like, we have to be willing to look and see and observe where those acts are needed and where they're called for, right? So there's a part of this also that, that requires us to, to look upon the crosses of the world, right? That's kind of how I talked about it this past Sunday that um, you, you walk into a, a room where everybody is loved and you add more love to it. Well, that's great. <laughs> um, you walk into a room where, where there's an absence of love and offer some love there that, that makes a, a bigger difference. And it's not always easy to look upon those things. Uh, and sometimes we see them and we have absolutely no idea how to respond to it. We, we see that there's pain, we see there's anguish, we understand that there, but we can't quite imagine what how it is that we can step into that sort of thing as well. Um, so it always sort of strikes me that, that these, that the crosses of pain and anguish and suffering um, are, are connected to then the, the call for loving acts to enter into those spaces, that those things are, are kind of one thing in some ways, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. And it, it's an interesting juxtaposition uh, to talk about anguish and pain and suffering and love in the, in the same way. Um, like sorrow and joy and, and that's that's one of the interesting things about Palm Sunday too right uh it has always struck me even as a child here we are waving these palm branches and shouting loud hosanna and we know that uh within a few days a crowd is about to turn on Jesus and call for his crucifixion um and so packed in this one week of the passion between uh, Palm Sunday and Easter, we have the crowds greeting his joy, arrival joyfully, and then him sitting with the disciples and giving them these commandments and having the Last Supper with them, and then Jesus' trial, and then Jesus' crucifixion, and then Jesus lying dead in the grave for three days, and then we'll get around to Easter the following Sunday. And somehow we manage uh, to pack all of this these massive swings between sorrow and joy and anguish and love all into this one week of uh between palm sunday and easter and there's a lot of juxtapositions or paradoxes that we see there that uh we're faced with and um yeah which is really kind of like most of most of our lives most days indeed right mm -hmm. and much of yeah. our life and faith too right yeah um we are called to this self-sacrificial love which will I'm by very nature, self-sacrifice means we're giving something up. And yet we recognize that through that process, we will experience love and joy. And so there's, there's, um, it, it's all there. It's all packed into this, uh, this week for us. So it sounds like there's something there that'll preach. I think so. I think so. I'm particularly excited to, to share the uh, choir piece, the virtual choir piece with the congregation, and then just spend some time reflecting on on how that relates to the passion narrative with Palm Sunday and, and Jesus command that we love one another and, and all that. So it's, it's going to be a great way to, uh, to ease us, to end the season of Lent and ease us into Holy Week, I think. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah, it'll be nice. So, all right, well, so we switch gears a little bit. You uh, and share a little bit about what's going on in life of the church. You mentioned that the, part of this uh, new lyrics thing arose uh, from that very little little devotional guide right there, that they may all be one, the first stitches. So uh, we are continuing to reflect on that, reflect on our call uh, to Christian unity and how we might sort of uh, 
I don't know, maybe readjust our hearts, I guess, a little bit to more easily uh, lean into the ways of love, I suppose, uh, for those, especially for those whom we perceive as being our enemies um, or on yeah. opposite sides of some issue and that issue varies for each individual person. So uh, if folks haven't uh, hopped in on that yet, you're certainly welcome to. Uh, we have uh, one last round of discussion groups, I think. Uh, there's one, uh, there was one today. There will be one on Friday morning at eight and one on Sunday at noon. Uh, and then, I don't know, maybe you'll read, lead another one next next week on Tuesday, but. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And we've got entries all the way through until Easter. So, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you probably won't be leading one on Easter, but. No, I don't think so. This Sunday will be the last one for the Sunday group. So, um, but folks, so we can hop into that and, and start working through it really at any time that they wanted. I can also share that this Sunday, uh, Dan Deffenbaugh will wrap up his his forum series on, uh, not necessarily on, but revolving around the Eisenheim altarpiece and the depiction of the crucifixion that is there. This past Sunday, he led a, a forum on Mary, Mother of Jesus, and so that is recorded. It's uh, not yet up on YouTube, but we'll get that up hopefully uh, sometime relatively soon. But uh, that is 9.15 Sunday morning via Zoom. So if folks are interested in joining that, they can let the church know and we will make sure that they get that link for that meeting. In addition to the forum, we also have another adult ed opportunity, which we call Errors Apparent. It's a small group class that has been studying a book called Visioneering, which is a study on the book of Nehemiah and talks about how we set vision for our own lives. And so uh, we, you're welcome to join us for that. We are, uh, we're about three quarters of the way through the book at this point, but you, you can always jump in on that one too. Uh, and we'd be happy to get you a, a copy of that book if you'd like, uh, or just join us. Uh, we have a good time of fellowship and prayer and, and reflecting. So it's, uh, it's, it's good. Uh, our adult or our Christian ed rather for uh, Pre-K through fifth grade is still being offered remotely. Our amazing director of Christian Ed, Steph Brader, produces a video each week, which is available on our church's YouTube channel, and packets were sent home uh, for the whole season of Lent, so hopefully you got those. Um, and then middle school and high school youth groups are meeting on Wednesday nights. Is that right, Damon? That is correct. Seven o'clock, masks, uh, and social distancing as, as much as possible, so... Yeah, and then worship. Uh, I think you all know that we've been back doing in-person worship since February 28th. Uh, we are observing social distancing, which means we have an RSVP system, uh, and you may not get to sit in your regular pew. We also wear face masks, and uh, there is no congregational hymn singing, uh, but you're welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. Um, we also are still doing our stay-at-home worship broadcast on Facebook Live as well as on the radio. And those are both very faithful options to join us for worship. So that is true for this Sunday, the 28th, uh, which is Palm Sunday, and the baptism. We're very excited about that. Um, and then uh, we'll roll into Holy Week and we'll do our normal Holy Week services and offer them both uh, in person as well as via Facebook Live. And so that's a Monday, Thursday service at 7 p.m. on Thursday, a Good Friday service. Uh, this is next week, not this week, right? And right. so we're talking about April 1st, Monday, Thursday, April 2nd, Good Friday. And then we'll be holding our traditional Easter vigil where we pray from the end of the Good Friday service until sunrise on Easter morning. And then our Easter service, uh, because of the social distancing guidelines that we're following, we couldn't fit everybody into our sanctuary. So we looked for a bigger venue and we found what I think is the largest venue in Hastings, Nebraska, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally overstating that. Largest indoor venue in Hastings, Nebraska, maybe. I don't know. So I don't know. Bottom line, we're going to be the fire marshal is listening. Over... <laughs> they will let us know if the fire marshal is listening. They will let us know. I'm sure. Yes. I mean, what's your will... the city, the auditorium, uh, fairgrounds? I uh, I think indoors. I think we're bigger. Yeah. Yeah. You would think. I don't know. 
Bottom line, Lynn <laughs> Farrell Arena over at Hastings College where they play basketball and volleyball. That is where we're doing our Easter service. All are welcome. We're calling it a community Easter service. Uh, face masks will be required and we will observe social distancing there too. But because of the size of the venue, we can fit a lot more people in, like probably 800 to 1,000 if, if we want to, which is great. Uh, and so we hope you can join us on Easter morning at Lynn Farrell Arena at 1030. We will have our chancel choir helping to lead worship as well as the Cathedral Brass. And it promises to be a delightful Easter service. And the first time we will all gather together as a family of faith. Um, we will also be broadcasting that. So if you prefer to do the stay at home worship on Easter Sunday, you can do that uh, on Facebook Live or on the radio. But that's uh, that's what we're looking at for Holy Week. And we will remind you of all of this when you tune in next week for the Monday check-in, which will hopefully be on a Monday. And we'll tee people up for all this as well. So. Mm. Yeah, should be good. I think so. Yeah. Um, is that it then? That's all I've got. All right. Must be time for a prayer. All right. Loving and gracious God, thank you that your spirit finds us uh, wherever we might be. Thank you for the calling that you place upon our hearts to follow you as best we are able, to love our neighbors as best we are able. Give us, oh God, the courage and the grace that we need to continue to follow you, to continue to meditate on your word, to continue to try to shape and reform our hearts so that they more fully reflect your love, your truth, your wisdom, and your grace in the world. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. With all those things said and done, until next time, toodaloo.